All right, guys, what we got here is a uh, 2003 Toyota Corolla LE. It's got a 1.8 engine, manual transmission. And a uh, <clears throat> customer complaint is that the half shaft seal or axle seal going into the passenger side of the transmission is leaking. So I'm going to show you how to pull the CV axle out of this car and replace the seal and reinstall the CV axle and finish the job. Now, first things first is safety. So the first thing you got to do with this is make sure that the parking brake is engaged. Which, as you can see there, the parking brake is up. And the next thing we need to do is to chalk the wheels. And what I'm going to do here is get a regular... I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a uh, it's an old military-style wheel chalk. I have a ton of them, and, and they come in quite handy. And uh, the rule of thumb is you want to chalk the wheel on the opposite back side that you're working on. Since we're going to be jagging up the passenger side... We're going to want to chalk the driver's side rear wheel. So, uh, we'll put our chalk in. Definitely don't want a car moving around while we're under it. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the vehicle off the ground. And I'm going to show you where to uh, place your jack on this. Now, a lot of people prefer jacking cars from this this is called the pinch I do not recommend using the pinch unless you're using the stock jack that comes with your vehicle that you use when you change tires these things are crushed easily and they get deformed and kind of beat up from using a regular floor style jack on them and I don't recommend that instead if you look a little bit further under here see if I can get you a good picture you will see this piece on this particular Toyota, this is the frame. This is an approved lifting point. Um, if you have access to repair software or talk to a shop, they can tell you where all the approved points for lifting are. This one is Toyota approved for lifting up a vehicle with a either lift or a standard jack. So we're gonna put our jack under the lift point. And pay no mind that it takes forever for this jack to lift up. It's an old one. And we're going to lift this side up off the ground. Now, some people will slide jack in from the front, use the uh, engine cradle. I don't recommend that. I've seen damage occur because of that. The engine cradle is not designed to lift a vehicle. And I highly don't recommend anybody try that trick. As you can tell, I need to get a new jack, something fierce. All right, that's plenty high to work with. You can see it's pretty, pretty far off the ground. Slider jack stand under. And have your jack stand under the frame. And gently let your uh, jack down onto the uh, jack stand. All right. Now, the next thing, of course, is going to be to take off the wheel. Okay, now that our wheel's off, and uh, I used an impact. If you don't have access to an impact, the best way to do it is to uh, loosen the lug nuts before you jack the vehicle up off the ground, and then you can take them off by hand and remove the wheel. Now, one of the reasons I want to show you that we chalk the opposite wheels, as you can see, the back tire is also off the ground. That happens a lot with small cars. Their frames are very short and very the unibody is very strong. So if you lift up the front very high, the back usually will come too. If I chalk the back wheel, that chalk would be doing no good right now. All right, the first thing I need to do after this is if you notice, this, let's see if I can get the focus a little bit better. It's a pain in the butt. This right here, is the axle nut and if you notice it's got a little indentation that's to keep it from walking itself off the threads and loosening the axle up so what we're going to need to do is to get rid of that push that indentation back up and i i recommend a small punch if you notice it's got a, a bit of a sharp tip on it and you slide it up underneath here just like this and, and using a hammer tap all the way down until this indent's pushed back up okay that's done um and if you notice uh, 
and it's hard to see. I know the, the focus is not great on this camera. There it goes. There is a little bit of damage done right here. That's normal. Um, we're not putting new axles in. New axles would have came with a new nut. Uh, I usually recommend that somebody take the time to replace that, but not everybody does it, so we'll have to reuse it and make do. Toyota's, uh, this particular one's a 32 millimeter. So we're going to put it on here. And I'm going to use an impact. If you don't have an access to an impact, a, uh, a large breaker bar will do the trick. You may have to... Uh, I've seen people take and put like a punch here on the rotor on the on the bottom side because you're going to be turning to the left to lock the rotor against the bracket to keep the rotor from turning to put enough force on it so you can put enough force on the nut to walk the nut off. But I'm going to cheat and use an impact. Alright, you can see the nut came right off. And the axle pushes in easily, so that means I won't have to try to drive this in. If this axle will not move, then what you can do is take a, a punch similar to this one, a little bit bigger. I recommend a larger punch that, and put it right in the indentation. Do not use any screwdrivers, nothing like that. You know, you don't want anything like that. It, it can shatter and, and spray you with shrapnel, and you don't want that. And just gently tap on the back with a hammer and drive the axle inwards. But since it's moving in by hand pressure, that means the axle is going to be loose. Now next, we have to remove the tie rod here. And we need to remove the ball joint. But as you can see, luckily on Toyotas, the ball joint is only held on with three bolts. Here, here well, two nuts and a bolt. And uh, it's a very convenient design. We, it'll keep us from having to fight the ball joint and have to deal with pickle forks or any of this kind of stuff here. We can do all the detachment here and the whole ball joint arm and everything will come away. So that's a 17 millimeter. So let's go ahead and get the uh, tie rod off and get the ball joint off. All right, we got the ball joint loose already. And I'll show you a sec here. As you can see, the ball joint is undone. We're completely loose here. We'll be able to pull that down and off. And to get the tie rod loose, a, uh, a lot of people like to use a pickle fork, which you place in right here. You drive it in, it dry, separates these two. I don't like pickle forks unless you're changing out a component because they will damage the component. The easiest way to get this is take your nut and put your nut back on. Just a couple of hand threads. Then go get a hammer. Go get a hammer, take your hammer, and you want to strike right here, where it's attached to the steering knuckle, not the tie rod end, but where it's attached to the steering knuckle. And you see, I tapped it, it dropped right down, and it's loose. You may have to hit it a little bit harder, but it that's the easiest way to do this without damaging the tie rod. You can see that the boot is undamaged, it's still completely fine. All right, now that our tie rod's out of the way, we can move our steering knuckles. You can see the tie rod controls steering. Push down on the, uh... sorry about that. I wish I had some help with this camera. But push down on the control arm here and slide your steering knuckle out. And you are uh, loose and you should be able to pull this, pull this assembly back and let the axle come free of the uh, spindle housing. I'll show you that in a second. All right, as you can see, the uh, axle is free from the steering knuckle now, and now it's time to go underneath and uh, pull the axle free of the transmission. So let's do that. Now, as you can see, the other end of the axle goes into, let's let it focus here. It goes into the transmission assembly right here. And you can see that the seal is indeed Kind of hard to see but the seal is indeed loose in fact it looks like the axle is uh, uh out just a little bit so we're gonna go ahead and pop that axle out Alright, now as you can see, the seal is out. Uh, you can see where I damaged a little bit taking the axle out. That's why if you ever replace CV axles, I highly recommend that you replace this seal. 
because it's really easy to damage. It's it's super easy to damage when you're doing an axle change, and then you know you have to go back in there and do it all over again, or else the job's not done. So, <clears throat> show you the axle. This is still a relatively new one. This entire section is often called a half shaft or a constant velocity axle, CV axle. And you have the outer CV joint and the inner CV joint. Now, as you can see, the boots are good on this. It's Like I said, it's not very old. Um, if you had a problem with the outer CV joint, often you can tell because when you turn the wheel and uh, you're making like a turn at a stoplight or something, you'll hear a really light click, 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 click noise. That means this uh, this joint has gone bad. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't know about is this joint can fail, and, and this joint can fail without damaging the boot. I've seen that, and uh, a lot of times it's hard to diagnose. Um, many vehicles will go through quite a few shops trying to figure out what is wrong, and it turns out to be this. If you have a vibration that only shows up on acceleration while cornering, you know, you're going around a corner and you're giving it some gas, going up a hill, and all of a sudden this vibration comes, and as soon as you left the gas and the vibration goes away, it moves right back out, that's probably a bad inner joint. They uh, don't usually make much noise, but they will cause a weird vibration. All right, so now that we have uh, the axle out of the way, let's uh, go get a seal puller and pull all the right. seal. Now I'm just going to be using a standard seal puller, nothing special. Um, some people do use screwdrivers. I'm not a huge fan of screwdrivers, but uh, they can do the job. Let's get you in here where you can see. And the trick is you just hook the little hook over around the seal on the back side. And make sure you're feeling seal, no metal. You want just a seal. And just gently rock it up. And out goes the seal. Now, something about axle seals, and uh, I know this camera's not super clear, but if you look on the inside, you will see that there is a spring in here. You can see it right there. You see that little metallic sheen. Let me pop it out. And a lot of times what happens is this spring gets loose. And if this spring gets loose, the seal lip inside here that is designed to ride against this edge of the axle and seal the axle off will not do its job. So uh, if you're ever looking at a seal or you have a weird leaking problem, make sure you look and make sure that there is a spring sitting inside of here and you'll be able to see it. You just pull the lip back a little bit and look and then you'll see this, the spring in there to keep uh, tension on it so in order for it to seal. Alrighty, let's uh, go get the new seal and put her in. All right, we have our new seal here, the same design. It's got a dust lip on it that meshes. Basically, what happens is this seal, I apologize about this, I'm doing this with just myself, so it makes it kind of interesting, sits right here. And that little lip goes inside of this lip, and between the two of them, they're supposed to keep road debris, dust, grime, all that good stuff, salt, rain, out of the system. So, now a lot of people will put a seal in by pushing it into the housing and then taking a punch or a screwdriver and banging away on this outside edge. And I don't recommend that. It's real easy to flex the seal and the next thing you know the seal's warped. It will not seal properly and it'll come back out on its own. So what I recommend is either I have a seal installer set but I don't have one that accommodates for this lip. I don't want to damage the lip either. So... What I do instead is I find a socket that's big enough, and I like a 12 point so that uh, less edges, to fit all the way around the seal. Oops, sorry. Fit all the way around the seal and push just on this outer edge right here, this flat lip. That's the strong part. It's solid. It's, there's a piece of metal inside there. You don't want to push in the inside lip, and you don't want to be banging away too far on the inside because you'll bust it. So I highly recommend that, uh, let's get that in focus again. Highly recommend that you use a socket. A socket will work well. And as you can see, I'll, I'm going to show you the, uh, fits right inside of there. 
nice and flush. You can see it fits nice, nice and neat. And you can put it right up inside the transmission and gently tap it into place. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. I uh, can't hold the camera and do it with both hands at the same time. So, Alright, as you can see the new seal is installed. Um, it's, we're still dripping fluid. That's because I didn't drain this transmission. I'm going to drain it when I'm finished and refill with some fresh synthetic oil. And uh, now it's time to uh, reinstall our axle. And uh, I'll show you that in a second. Alright, now we got our axle in position. And I wanted to show you this before I slide it into place. You want to take your hand and gently just feel around and you'll feel the splines line up and lock in and you'll feel it quit twisting a little bit and it's rusted. Now there's a couple ways you can install this. Um, I don't recommend manhandling any more than you absolutely have to. The easiest way is to line your axle up as straight as you can and just push. Now, some of these work this way. As you can see this one didn't. It tried to back out a little bit. This is a lot harder to do with one hand than it looks. But, as you can see, it's lined up. Now, another way is, is you take a, either, either a brass mallet, or I prefer what is called a dead blow hammer. It's a plastic looking hammer. It's got a weight inside of it. And uh, these, are, these are really good because they do not damage anything. You can hit on stuff pretty hard and, and not tear it up. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this axle up and strike it here at the very tip. If you use anything metal, you want to thread your nut back on so it's flush so you're not messing with the threads. There's too much of a chance if you're using a metal hammer, even brass, that you could strike these threads and damage them. You don't want to do that. So if you can, get you a, uh, a dead blow because that works much better. You almost no chance of doing damage to this. And just gently... And tap 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 until it seats all the way into the transmission I'll show you that in a second alrighty now as you can uh well you can kind of see like I said this thing is horrible focus there it goes transmission is all the way back the axle is all the way back in the transmission we slide over here we can look and see that everything meshes up nice as soon as the focus decides to work there we go it's nice and solid. It's inside. Um, we still got a little bit of dripping off of here where it was on the tranny, but that steady dripping is gone now, showing me that the seal did in, indeed seal back up. And uh, now it's time to just do the reverse of what you did when you took it apart. You need to put this knuckle back over these splines and then reattach everything. Be right, right back. Now, as you can see... I have the uh, fasteners and everything reattached. And you can see the uh, tie rod nuts attached here. And the ball joint nuts are attached here. Now none of these have been tightened yet. These are all hand tight because I'm going to use a torque wrench to uh, final tighten these. I do not use impacts when tightening any of this stuff up. Wheel nothing. Once it's taken apart with the impact, I put the impact away. We're done with the impact. Everything else needs to be done by hand and it needs to be done with a torque wrench. So let's get started. The ball joint nuts are supposed to be torqued to 66 foot-pounds. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and torque everything down, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, everything is torqued down, and as you can see, I used a uh, punch to keep this rotor from turning while I was torquing on the, uh, the axle nut. As you can see, we're lined up exactly right where we took it all apart. And uh, you can't forget, you need to put a cotter pin in this. Now, a question I hear a lot is, you know, uh, if the holes don't line up, should I loosen or should I tighten? On tie rods, ball joints, anything like that, that is not a uh, rear-wheel drive, two-wheel drive pickup truck front bearing style design, which is called tapered bearings. You always uh, go over to get your cotter pin line up. Don't go under. You uh, want a tie rod, if it's if it's going to be anything, you want it slightly over torqued than under torqued. So I'm going to install a cotter pin in here, and uh, I'll take my punch, and I'll drive this back down where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to reinstall the tire, and uh, torque the lug nuts down. And we're done with that. I will uh, slide underneath and show you where the drain plug and fill plugs are, and uh, refill the transmission, and that's it.
All right, as you can see, the wheel's back on. I haven't torqued the wheel down yet because I can't do it till it's on the ground since, you know, anytime you try to put any real torque on it, it's just going to turn. But they're hand tight in a star pattern, and then uh, they'll be torqued down to, uh, I believe, 76 foot-pounds is torque for this vehicle. But I will show you where the drain and refill plugs are on this vehicle. The drain plug is right here there we go that's a little bit better as you can see uh, you just take this plug out here and let all the fluid come out you done put this plug back in torque it down it's got a torque reading uh, you don't and if you can there's a little crush gasket in there I keep a stock of them here in the shop but there's a little looks like a washer but it's not it's actually a gasket and uh, you swap that out and when you torque this down it will properly crush that to ensure a tight seal and that's also one of the reasons you want to torque it if you change that out and you crank it down too tight you can just deform that and it'll leak if you don't crank it down tight enough it'll work itself out and that's the last thing you want is this coming out on somebody while they're going down the road and then the fill plug is right here well you see as soon as the phone decides to do its thing there we go and uh, same thing you can see you see that little gasket it's actually like I said it looks like a washer but it's actually a gasket and uh, same before my phone kicked me out. Um, the same thing. You don't want to over torque this or under torque this. You want it the, the proper torque setting, and it'll crush this uh, gasket in place and, and seal this off. Now I'm not going to show refilling this, or um, because it's a very long process. It takes a while to get through the tube. The tube I run up to the top. I just take a funnel, and uh, I'll show you. <laughs> All right. I take a funnel and I put a funnel right here and then I have a clear plastic tube that runs down and I cockeye it into the uh, transmission here and you just fill the uh, transmission it's two quarts but uh, if you don't know you just fill until fluid comes out that hole and uh, then uh, put your plug back in torque it down and uh, you know start the vehicle up go for a test drive come back and uh, look it all over really good for leaks make sure you don't have any kind of leaks or anything like that and uh well there you go that's how to uh either change the cv axle out well basically that's what it is change cv axle out and change the seal which i recommend you do at the same time like i said it's real easy to damage that seal taking the axle out and there's nothing more frustrating to be completely done with the job and finding out that hey you damaged the seal and now the thing leaks like crazy so uh there you go 2003 toyota corolla le with a 1.8 manual transmission how to uh change the fluid and uh, change out cv axle and uh, hope you enjoy.